Today, I'm going to read you a longer passage from the book of Isaiah, chapter 54. It has this great theme, do not fear. So Isaiah chapter 54, verses 4 through 8. Here we begin. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed. Neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame. For you will forget the shame of your youth and will not remember the reproach of your widowhood any more. For your maker is your husband, and the Lord of hosts is his name, and your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. For the Lord has called you, like a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, like a youthful wife when you were refused, says your God. For a mere moment I have forsaken you, but with great mercies I will gather you. With a little wrath I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness I will have mercy on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. Notice how beautiful this promise is. God says to restored Israel, they will not remember the reproach of their widowhood anymore. God compared the disgrace of Israel to the shame of barrenness. Now he compares their humiliation to the reproach of widowhood. Here the Lord promises rescue from Israel's shame. And how? Because in these verses he says, For your maker is your husband. God wipes away any sense of shame with this promise. Though Israel might have been regarded as forsaken as a widow, the Lord promised to stand in the place of her husband. Through the centuries, many hurting women have taken this promise for themselves. They have found beautiful comfort in the promise that God would be a husband to them when all others had forsaken them, that God would supply and meet emotional needs and rescue us from our disgrace and shame when all others forsake us. It's true that the Lord can be a greater husband than any man can be. This is something for every woman to remember and something no married woman should forget. But it applies to every believer. We all need the grace and the goodness that God can bring to us. And he can do it. In these verses, God says this of himself, the Lord of hosts is his name. You see, to comfort and strengthen his people, God reminded them of what a glorious Savior he is. He's their maker. He is the Lord of hosts. He is their Redeemer. He's the Holy One of Israel, and He is called the God of the whole earth. Therefore, they can find comfort. Even though it says here in these verses, God tells them, For a mere moment I have forsaken you. God never really forsook Israel, yet He recognized that they felt forsaken. God said, for a mere moment, I allowed you to feel that I had forsaken you, but, it says, with great mercies, I will gather you. The word forsaken is in the present tense, but the great mercies are in the future tense. But those future mercies were real and gave Israel cause to set their hope and trust in the Lord, even though they felt forsaken at the moment. God also says to them, I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness, I will have mercy on you. You see, the contrast is between the moment of feeling forsaken and the everlasting nature of the kindness that is to come. When we feel tested and forsaken, we should recognize that it's just for a moment, and that the everlasting blessing of God will certainly come to us in Jesus Christ. This is reason to trust God and to thank Him and to do it today.